what is going on everyone first and foremost i want to say thank you for being here right now watching this video i do really appreciate you for your time and i would really appreciate if you do consider subscribing simply because it does truly help me out a lot now we're going to be reacting to 50 cent leaks audio of Didi and usher proving they had an affair man you get what i mean we all know Didi and usher had a thing going on ever since you know that viral clip that's been going around for years of diddy said he used to fight over the the frosted flakes or something like that with um usher bro that was like really 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 you know zesty not only was zesty was it zesty but it was also very suspicious because you know back then usher was just a kid bro so it's just like yeah man you can you, you, you already get the idea who you know who diddy was messing with but overall not gonna do too much yap and let's just play the video see what it's talking about you're a dad now would you ever send your kid to puffy camp <laughs> hell <laughs> no <laughs> those people in that music business they have friends that have friends you understand he's a sex he's got guns and he's got semen coated vhs tapes oh. yeah some people it, it, it ain't only with Diddy. It's other people that tried to buy footage. When you, you ever seen football players, they they beat their wives, they 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 beat their girlfriends, they do stuff at the hotels. Their management, their publicists, they go to the hotels and see can they find somebody in security to distort those things. It's not the first time it happens. Yo, you got a job. You're making... $35,000, $40,000 a year. Doing the security there. Puff come say, yo, man, get rid of that tape. I got 100000 for you. You putting in your resignation the next day, they can't find the tape. <laughs> Anybody, if they don't have no morality, they don't have no, a lot of guys would do that. Cause they feel like I could find another security job at the hotel, at another hotel. Not just any other celebrity, but Usher himself had a secretive affair with Sean Diddy Combs. He wasn't only drew by Diddy, he was uh, groomed by L.A. Reid, the rest of them too, man. Because they knew what happened. Then they came out and brought him back. And all of a sudden, he's getting all the great tracks. He's getting all the songs. They making him into this star. Even though he may have been abused. Now, of course, Diddy's sexual preferences and partners are supposed to be nobody's business. But here we are. 50 Cent is using his celebrity platform once again and sharing all the explicit details of the affair Usher once shared with Diddy. The details? Well, they are quite disturbing. He's a sex -er. He's got guns and he's got semen coated VHS tapes. Oh. I would have went in in a hazmat suit. <laughs> now, gay men have been using this for years. See, back in the day, if you went to a gay party or a gay rave, there were certain drugs that you would always find on hand. Viagra, XD, Special K, and cocaine. Now, see, the cocaine can keep you up all night, but unfortunately, it gives you limp noodles. Because of what the blood flow is. So the, you who wants to fuck with a half hard dick all night. So that's why you have the Viagra to make sure that the, the dick involuntarily stays hard while you're numbing your fucking self with the car. Now see the catamaran, that's a horse tranquilizer. So that relaxes all your muscles. You could get fuck 80 fuck um ton gorillas. You wouldn't feel a thing. So now your dick is gonna stay hard. You numbed up and you high 
You got the cash in you, so you don't feel sh And then you add the, the ecstasy to put in the feeling that you've now blocked out, and now you got a party. Freak off cocktail. Yeah. Here's everything you need to know. Not too long ago, producer Rodney Lil Jones filed 73 documents accusing rapper Diddy of sexual assault. Where there is a specific section in the evidence that Jones's attorneys have drafted where the former producer asserts that Diddy had a sexual relationship with a Philadelphia rapper who was dating Nicki Minaj. Of course, that does help to narrow down the selection, but internet users were quick to discover further hints. As a result, videos, images, and testimonies imply that the rapper Jones is referring to in the documents is Meek Mills. So, rather than attempting to refute these charges, Meek Mills announced that a new album would be released shortly and deleted all of his social media accounts. Not to mention, according to the court documents, Diddy had sex with both Stevie J and an unidentified R&B artist. And looking deeply into all of it, it's clear that some are already beginning to assert that this unidentified singer is none other than Usher, the most recent Super Bowl halftime performer. So how exactly did this talented artist get into such a trap? You know, Puff is making jokes about how they used to wrestle for the Frosted Flakes in the morning. And, yeah, I bet they did. You know. Somebody frosted you know, some, somebody frosted somebody flakes. <laughs> Without the milk. <laughs> you see, Usher joined Bad Boy Entertainment straight away after meeting Sean Diddy Combs when he was just 14 years old. So as a young child, he truly had no idea what Diddy had to offer him. From there onwards, it was said that Combs helped Usher enter the world of fame and fortune by taking on the role of mentor and housing Usher as part of his mentoring program. Of course, we now know what went down during that time. My brother right here from day one, we used to wake up and I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the frosted flakes. You know what I'm saying? Put your tongue with it. Breathe it in. Yeah, they yours, but we gonna see this for you. This ain't for nobody else but you. You take that time, boy. I see you. Fly ass motherfucker, baby. You in the kitchen. Eating all my cereal. <laughs> I was having a good time, you know what I mean? Does he have you doing any chores? Are you doing dishes at all? I mean, to keep you humble somewhat? Or are you just like, can you stay up till four in the morning with them and party? I mean, I could. I yeah. actually stayed up longer than them. <laughs> and, I, and, what, and do you have money? What's going on? I mean, I had like per diem. Yeah. I, I had like, you know, what like a, a living. life. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. 14 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> See? Obviously, now, Usher has accepted a huge part of it all candidly revealing a less glamorous aspect of his early career. According to Usher, Sean Diddy Combs had exposed him to drugs and wild parties when he was a just young child. And it was hard. There were, there were a lot of things I seen and uh, a lot of positions that I think I was put in where I had to make very, very tough decisions in my life about who I would be. I was 13 years old and being 13, having that type of exposure, you know, yeah, it was cool to go to Howard Homecoming with Puff. It was great to be able to go to Club USA or the Supper Club, you know, with Puffy in that time or the tunnel. But these are places that a 13-year-old probably should not be. You know, most kids would be excited about it. You know, most kids are trying to figure out, you know, how to be around, you know, hot girls, pretty girls. I'm around grown women, and I'm seeing them do things and, and have experiences that I'm not quite ready for. You know, and I think that he was just trying to show me the lifestyle. However, that's not what I was there for. I was there because I wanted a career, man. So we would fight, we would tussle. <laughs> More than often, I think Puffy would say, man, you gotta chill, like you're just a little bit too intense. You know, you gotta relax. Like, yo, man, I'm here to work, man. I ain't saying in a week. I mean, I'm 13 years old, like banging on this man as though, <laughs> you know, I am the manager. I am the spokesperson for Usher. And I'm telling him, look, you're gonna put me in the studio, man. You got Biggie Smalls in there, you got Craig Mack in there. You're gonna make me a priority too. I'm not here to party with you. I don't wanna go to the clubs. I'm, matter of fact, I'm too young to even be in here. Why you got me in clubs? 
I think as a kid, I realized, hey, look, that's not my ring. That's not my moment. That's not my bottle. That's not my drink. That's not my celebration. So I'm not here to celebrate. I wanted people to be excited about me the way that they were excited about him. I wanted my own success. So I would stay at the studio. All of what I could absorb from being an artist, being around other performers like Mary J. Blige, Joe Deceit, I'll Be Sure at the time, Missy Elliott, Timbaland, all of these people, I would just absorb every bit of what I could get my hands on. I was just pulling everything I possibly could. There was a lesson in all of it. There was something to pull from it all because I, I, I got a chance to see a glimpse of the lifestyle a glimpse of the idea of what it was to be successful. And, and, and part of all of this is really, if you can see it, then you should believe it. Moving forward, Usher said he felt a lot of pressure to participate in things he wasn't physically, emotionally, or psychologically prepared for. Combs was also criticized by Usher for not being the greatest role model. And so, he felt forced to fire Combs. Because as a result of being around that man, Sean Puffy Combs, I don't sleep to this day. <laughs> I have a problem sleeping to this day. I got it from him. I mean, this is a dude who just never slept. He just, I mean, he's the, probably the first one to get up and the last one to go to sleep. So at the age of eight, nine, you know, I begin to ask myself, like, what am I gonna do with my life? Who am I gonna be? Am I gonna be um, a teenager who sleeps on my mom's couch looking for, you know, a menial job that, you know, will at least give me enough to just pay for gas to get there and from every day. No, nah, I want to do something that I feel is going to take my mom uh, out of here and, and hopefully put us in a better situation. Currently, recent actions by fellow rapper Mace, who confronted Diddy on social media about the exploitation from their past joint ventures, have drawn attention to ongoing issues in the music industry. Mm. That's really good. Let me take my shoes off. Um, now, I can say this because it's not something I didn't say to him. Puff, how, how do I want to say this? Me and Puff was like, I felt like I did more than I got credit for, more than I got paid for. You felt or did you do that? Um, Cause you said felt like okay. Feeling. Let's clear that up. Then. You saying you feeling that? No, we gonna you... keep it with. I'm, Cause I'm trying to be nice. I never got paid what I was worth, and I never got the respect I was worth. So that this thing that I got for Puff is more like you trying to keep me here. I'm not here. All my peers is up here. All my peers are bosses. When it's time, just like. Somebody raise somebody up, you know they did work with you. They go from your little man to maybe a and &R to something else. He just kept trying to keep me right here like, like he didn't want me to grow at anything. And, and to anybody, is that gonna bother you? Yeah. Especially if well, I'm producing the work. Yeah. Puff would go out and party and I would be in the studio writing the records and then I just come back and say, He'll say this is his part or that is his part, but I was a the person there creating it all. Right. And then, I mean, from the lyrical standpoint, yeah. where somebody did a beat, and even more money, more problems, I came up with that. I came up with the beat too. And I said, Stevie, we need to do this beat and do it like this. So just imagine all of these moments that are taken from you, the, the, the records, the beats, you ain't getting the money, you publishing. ain't getting the publishing, you ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. No. Okay. So that became really frustrating for me because I'm you looking- You don't think you like that, what that mean? I don't think you would like that. Like- if a <laughs> Did you like that? Yeah, what the like, story is you listening to, man? Man, I don't think you like that, to be pulling what you pulling. Yeah, you, you from the ghetto, you like- oh. Yeah, like you know what, you know what would come with doing that, but everybody is letting you get away with it. Everybody. So me quitting after one album, it didn't take long for me to figure it out. Like, 
I'm not gonna be here with this. I don't care who's here because you're not paying me and you're not respecting me. Naturally, it appears that Mace accused Diddy of still refusing to grant him publication rights for work he did more than 20 years ago. In a tweet, Mace has called out rapper Diddy Combs on his alleged misuse of the young artists who signed unfair contracts with Diddy and become caught up in a never-ending cycle of physical and emotional abuse and freakouts with the rapper. And naturally, we are aware of Diddy's talent at relating to up-and-coming musicians, as Gene Deal claims to be at least partial to the situation. To begin with, Gene charges Combs of frequently abusing Cassie, his ex-girlfriend, by forcing her to take forcing her to have sex with male prostitutes and punching her multiple times. Additionally, he says that she repeatedly said no and tried to push him away when he broke into her house one day in 2019 and sexually assaulted her. I didn't know her, but I knew somebody like her, and that was Kim Porter. I didn't know Cassie, but I knew somebody who was going through the same thing she was going through, and that was Kim Porter. So people ask me, yo, and they send me clips of Cassie, I guess it's an affidavit to the courts, you know, of what she experienced. And it's like, it was the same thing Kim was going through. The same thing, bro. Kim was going through the same thing, the beatings. Later, in their relationship, Ventura's lawsuit stated that Combs coerced her into engaging in a fantasy of his called voyeurism following a few years of dating. Ventura would be instructed to have sex with several male prostitutes while Combs observed, masturbated, snapped pictures, drew Cassie, and videotaped the sex acts, a practice he called freak-offs. Were you surprised that there were so many cameras in his houses? No! That he's recording these... Oh, he is the J. Edgar Hoover hip-hop! Okay. Y'all done seen him put on the pyramid wear the skirt? So let me ask you, when you hear that Cassie was told to hire male escorts to come in the, what they call freak-offs now, yeah. um, that is something, is that something normal that yeah. happens in Hollywood? Yeah. Freak-offs. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Everybody know that. I've been saying it. Yeah. Yeah. What, how many times I got, these this is wild. So do you feel like people, when they hear uh, pink car, Young Miami has to bring across. That's... Wait, the two, the, the two seat. Yeah, the two seat. That's what they call. I got, no, I found out. I talked to my drug guy because a... I wanted to be informed. Because people was calling the two seat is calling it the two seat. I didn't know which one it was, so I talked to my drug guy, and my drug guy filled me in, and then it made perfect sense. But if I explain how I knew Cassie was gonna come forward. That could hurt some people, um, which is why the last time I sat on this blue couch, I said what I said. Congratulations, young Miami. Run as fast as Cassie did. Ventura said he would actually save some of the footage, even though he claimed to have erased it. The freak-offs would happen in a variety of places, including Combs's many homes and upscale hotels. And if all of that wasn't terrifying enough, Gene Deal says that during a 2016 freak-off, Cassie attempted to flee when Combs punched her in the face, leaving her with a black eye. He claims that when Combs went to sleep, she attempted to leave the room, but he woke up and followed her out into the hallway. Ventura says that after entering the hallway, Combs threw several glass vases at her, causing the glass to break and scatter all over the place, even hitting her. Obviously, the event was allegedly recorded by the hotel's security cameras, but Combs paid the establishment $50,000 for the footage, according to the court complaint. If she remembers the night in which she is assaulted, she needs to get her legal team together. They go back to that hotel. All that footage has to be saved and put in the archives. If that footage is cut off from the time where she says she was assaulted to another time, just say she was assaulted at 12 o'clock. 
and the footage is missing from 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. You understand? Or distorted in a way. She got a lawsuit through that. She might be owning, she might be owning one of those hotels. She might be owning one of those hotels. Because that's a lawsuit, bro. You can't do that. That's evidence. And by the time they come looking for it, it's already messed up and gone, and they don't know what happened to it. That's something neat. That's real easy. Why you can't find the... the <laughs> why you can't find the tape a Biggs murder at the Peter Peterson Music, the Peterson Museum. Why you can't find the tape? Right outside the museum. The museum has to have, just like the hotels, your cameras had to reach about more than 100 feet from the hotel for the insurance purposes. So, why is that footage missing? Why is the footage from Cassie missing? Why is the footage from Big missing? Because somebody paid somebody for something. Like I said, those people in that music business, they have friends that have friends. You understand? And they pay people to make shit happen and they pay people to make shit go away. They strong, bro. Don't, don't think they ain't strong. You have to have God in your life, man, not to fit these people. And no... But, um, yeah, I'm going to just end this video here, man. This is absolutely insane. A lot of information in one video. But I do want to say subscribe for more content, like I mentioned, because it does truly help me out a lot. Now, I'm going to get to my opinion, man, my opinion on the situation, bro. It's crazy that Usher actually talked about it. I didn't know he officially actually talked about his experiences at a young age with Diddy. He definitely might have not exposed everything that he did with Diddy and Saul, but he did, you know. He did talk about it, some of it. Let's just say that. You get what I mean? Because some things you really can't can't talk about. Let, let's be honest, bro. But, you know, Diddy had him in at a young age, bro. You get what I mean? And it's just like, you know, Usher wanted to make it. He wanted to make it, and he, he he pretty much saw Diddy as the only way he could make it. You get what I mean? Diddy was the only big person in his life. He pre Diddy pretty much pretty much had a big influence in the industry. He had a big part of running the industry, you could say. So you know, um, Diddy is the one who can either make or break your career back then. So you know, it's just kind of like you know Usher dependent on on Diddy in a way, but. Yeah, man, that's crazy. And um, Diddy is also being exposed for violating Cassie, bro. The things, the things he did to Cassie is absolutely insane. But if she wants to sue the who, she can sue the hotel, right? But she has to get, she has to get through um, Diddy first. You get what I mean? You can't just sue the hotel. You got, you have to sue Diddy first and be successful with it. Then I'm sure you can, you know, sue the hotel. But you know, um, that did happen though, and Diddy did settle. Because he's guilty, bro. You know what I mean? Like, he literally violated Cassie. That's insane. That's like, living with Diddy is like a living nightmare, bro. Like, bro, they, the way they talk about Diddy, you would think he's he's America's most wanted. I kid you not, bro. This guy is, this guy is a living nightmare, man. But, um, yeah, man, I don't have too much to say about this situation, man. But this is a lot in just one video. But I'm going to just end it here. Let me know what you guys think. And like I mentioned, subscribe for more content. And yeah, man. Peace out.